Hello, my name's Gavin. This is Genre Books. It's Tuesday, so it's Tag Tuesday. I was tagged probably a couple of months ago by Pat for a tag that came from um, To Readers It May Concern, and it was the Read Smart tag. Now, I recorded a video for that I wasn't happy with it I didn't think it was very good I didn't get around to releasing it and before you know it I'm doing some other tag so I never got to redo it and then um, last week or a little over a week ago the book buds tagged me for the same thing so I'm gonna try it again I had no notes last time I had no notes this time I have no reason to think the outcome might be any different this time. This may never see the light of day, but let's give it a go. There are nine prompts, the ninth of which is tag some other people. So for the eight prompts which need answers, let's make a start. Prompt number one. What's your strategy to stay focused and engaged while reading? And this is why I had problems with the last time I tried this. Is that I don't think I do. Um, I don't think I have any strategies. I don't think I stay focused. I mean, I obviously do because I get stuff read. But um, I've got no great lessons to teach here. I usually have three, four different books on the go. And that does help. I might not be in the mood for reading the book I've been reading all day or my commute but I'll be happy to read something else that I've you know may have started a week or so ago so juggling a few different books assuages any issues I may have from a mood reading point of view of not feeling like a book at that point whilst I'm actually reading um annoyingly what I need for staying focused and engaged is stuff that I don't often get and one would be peace and quiet and I think the second would be a steady stream of, of, of caffeine and if I go to make myself a coffee I've, I've broken my concentration so I, I have the caffeine but I need to get back into where I was reading. The best strategy to stay focused is to read stuff that's interesting so um, I will try to pick an interesting book whenever I don't feel beholden to read any of the books um, that I'm reading even if it's something which you know, I've seen other people read and think oh I probably should give this a go I won't do that unless I am genuinely interested or intrigued by the subject or author prompt number two how does your environment influence your focus and what can you do to optimize it I always film or mostly film my videos early in the morning before people are up and causing a ruckus. What might be slightly distracting when reading a book is downright annoying when trying to record a video. I do a fair bit of my reading um, on my commute. So I'm on a train, really the only thing that, that helps me keep my concentration is listening to stuff um, on my headphones. I've got to be listening to the right things. I can't listen to anything which has, I won't say which has words in it because I can listen to uh, stuff in, I, I listen to maybe some Japanese rock music because I don't understand what they're singing about. Or I can listen to Sigur Ross, Icelandic, don't know what they're singing about. Um, mostly it's instrumental. But um, if there is someone singing in English, I'm going to have difficulty concentrating on what I'm reading. The music doesn't help me focus. When I'm at home and it's quiet, I don't often listen to music at the same time that I'm reading. When I'm out, 
it is just something which smooths over the cacophony of sound that I would otherwise be subjected to. Other people's phone calls. The endless announcements on railway stations, on platforms, on trains. For optimal focus, a bit of peace and quiet and this chair and the laptop off. And the phone off. Or at least on airplane mode. Increasingly, in this last year, um, my trouble there is if I'm in that moment of quietitude, I think it's a perfect time to get one of my videos recorded. So um, possibly that's cutting into uh, my, my reading time. Prompt number three. What methods do you use to retain and recall information from what you've read? I don't. I obviously do recall stuff that I've read, but there seems to be neither rhyme nor reason to what I do recall. And that's not just in books, that's just in, in, in general life. I might be able to remember a turn of phrase from a book that I read years and years ago, but I couldn't tell you what the characters' names were. I could probably recall an entire series of, of, of book titles from a, you know, a science fiction series or, or something and then struggle to remember uh, the birthdays of my family. There is no ordering system uh, in my brain. Um, there probably ought to be a little bit more discipline, but um, I do have good recall for some things terrible recall for others there may well be methods for remembering categorizing all of your memories but i think at this point um i may be a bit beyond that i'll wait 10 years for the microchip in the head that does it all for me prompt number four how do you approach difficult or challenging material I think I try to approach all books in the same way. Um, if it's a book of book I'm reading for Garb August, or if it is, you know, a non-fiction uh, piece of history, or you know, a, a piece of philosophy or something, I will just read it in the same environmental situation showing the book that I'm not scared of it and I will treat it just like any other book. I think the only difference really is that I will read it slower. I if if I am reading um something where the information is 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 challenging or dense then the only thing you can do to give it its due is to spend more time in absorbing that information. Very occasionally the best approach is to go, do you know what, that's a little bit beyond me, and uh, put it away for another day. I've certainly got some books in the shelves that um, are put away for that day, and I will have to unearth them at some point. Prompt number five, what role do note-taking and annotation play in your reading process? If I'm just reading something, they won't have any place um i don't make notes in the books that i own i used to when i was at university and i've got some textbooks which which have my scrolls in them um i, I wouldn't do that anymore i would certainly take notes on a notepad outside of the book if i was making notes but there's little that i am needing to make notes about. If I'm making notes these days, it's usually in, in preparation for one of these videos. Um, so occasionally I'm jotting down my thoughts if I know that I'm going to have to come back to it months later. If I'm reading for something which I'll be talking about at the end of the week or the end of the month, then, then typically I won't. The only thing I'm making notes for properly um, is when I'm going to the British Library and reading um, history books. That's because I want to do something with those notes once I've 
got enough notes together. You're certainly not allowed to annotate books from the British Library. There are people going around checking that you don't. You're not even allowed a pen in there. Pencils are okay, no pens. It has been many years since I have had to habitually take note of what I'm reading and, you know, be able to cite those notes or quotes in a you know consistent professional way and I've had to relearn that a little bit over the last couple of years since I've been going to the British Library so um, I'm becoming a little bit more formal in, in how I do things I think the only piece of advice I could give is pick your note-taking citing standard and stick with it until it becomes easy Prompt number six, how do you balance reading for pleasure with reading for personal or professional development? And again, this is easy for me because everything is being read for pleasure. Even that stuff which you know I, I want to at some point maybe do something with, it's a pleasure to read it. I'm doing something that interests me. There are some things that I have to read for work. I don't even count that. When I have to read for work, usually I have to sort of pay absolute attention to and make sure that it's comprehensible, clear and actionable. But that's work. That's not reading. Reading is for fun. I'm fortunately well past the point in my life where reading had to be towards some kind of academic goal. This is also how I've gone from reading, you know, uh, uh, Jacques Derrida, Lyotard, uh, De Saussure, Habermas, to reading Lionel Thamthorpe, uh, to reading, um, to reading E. E. Doc Smith. It's nice to have the academic learning to sometimes apply stuff to um, popular literature, but it's not needed. So there's no need for me for balance. There is no balance there. I think the balance is to do exactly what you want, to read exactly what you want, and you have got the balance right. Do not feel beholden that you have to understand something on some grandiose level above just enjoying what you're reading. Prompt number seven, what's the importance of setting reading goals? Goals are difficult. I set reading goals which are just out of reach. If you don't believe me, look at any of my TBR videos, compare it to my Roundup videos and you'll see the disparity there. My eyes are bigger than my belly, and that's saying something. But I think goals for, for reading, where, to be honest, it's important to no one but yourself. They are there to stretch you. Nothing bad is going to happen if I only read 150 out of the 175 novels that I want to in a year. The ground isn't going to swallow me up. They're not going to take me out and shoot me. But it is there to keep you honest. It is there to have something to, to, to motivate you, to keep your uh, sights set on. And it's got to be something which isn't completely out of the question for you to attain. But I think the most dangerous thing with a reading goal is what if you set yourself a goal of 150 books to read in the year and you get to mid-October and you've read 150. You could, of course, set yourself a stretch goal and go for that. But you could also run the risk of resting on your laurels, putting your feet up, and missing out on those books that you might have read. I mean, I love making lists, TBR lists, plans. I love finding out about 
more books that I could read and I make my TBR even longer. As it is, if I added nothing to my TBR from now, I'm probably busy until I'm 70 at least. But there's nothing wrong in leaving some pieces of your TBR still TBR by the time you had decided to, you know, arbitrarily have finished something. And let's face it, with Booktube, there are arbitrary finishes to lots of things. All of these book events have, I won't say they have hard cutoffs, because you could quite happily go and continue reading something. But to be honest, the next book event has started. One of my goals this year is to try to have no book events in November or December so I can catch up and finish books that I have begun but not completed because um, events, dear boy, events. Again, I don't really know and I think this is the reason I probably shelved the last time I did this video. I don't think it is important to set reading goals in the grand scheme of things. It might well be important for you. I like to be able to just make sure I don't forget stuff. A TBR is there as a reminder that this author, this book exists. Prompt number eight. What are some strategies for overcoming reading slumps or lack of motivation? I think I've touched on some of these already have a number of different books on the go you don't have to be actively reading them each week and i think in that respect it's probably good to have a mix of fiction and non-fiction it's easier to dip back into a non-fiction book potentially than dipping back into a fiction book because you have to find yourself within the moment of the fiction again but have a variety of different things I think a reading slump is like a writer's block and the only way to overcome either of those is to read or write. I'm sorry that's not very helpful if you really don't feel like doing it but it is the only way to do it. How do you get out of a reading slump? Read. Read something you enjoy always read something you enjoy and then you're 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 not going to slump if you read if you're reading something that you feel you have to be reading you're not going to enjoy it as much um brilliant if you do enjoy it brilliant if you enjoy it more than you thought you were going to and this is the reason that, that we do go out of our comfort zone and read other things but if it's a choice between reading something worthy or not reading at all well then they, they just take that middle option of read something that you you know you want to it will get you back into reading it will get you back into the habit of reading with me i think it's probably the commute that kept me going in the pre booktube time before i was watching booktube videos before i was enthused to pick up this genre something new something i've not heard of before what would have kept me reading is the regularity of something. It doesn't take long for a habit to form. And I know this because I went through a period where I was reading on the commute quite happily. And then I wanted to watch um, um, a, a TV series. So I did that on the commute for a couple of days then all of a sudden I'm watching television on my commute all the time and this went on for a, a year and I realized that you know I hardly read anything that year that wasn't a slump that was just falling out of habit I don't think I've watched a tv series on my phone on the commute now for six years um and that's because one day I decided to break the habit, pick up a book, read a book instead. By the time I finished that book, that's become my new habit. 
I think a fair proportion of people on BookTube are people who have rediscovered a love of literature. And it's no great personal journey, it's just they fell out of the habit. And I think what got them back into the habit of reading was breaking their daily habit that they had before. And I think this is the reason there was such an explosion in BookTube at the time of the pandemic. People were taken out of their daily lives. You were now no longer on a nine to five, Monday to Friday treadmill. Don't get me wrong, the work still had to be done. But everyone's daily timetable was up in the air. For a large number of people, their daily timetable now included a lot of free time. People dealt with this in their own particular way. But I already knew how to bake a loaf of bread. But I picked up other habits. I don't, you know, I enjoy going for a walk. But it wasn't until I couldn't go for a walk that I really enjoyed it. We were allowed out at the height of the pandemic. We were allowed out one time a day. You would make the most of that come rain or shine. I finally understood in those few months why dogs are always so excited when it's walkies time. And people found new hobbies and new habits. People rediscovered old hobbies and they became new habits. And reading, for a lot of people, was one of those things. Now, I know that Booktube existed before this, but to be honest, I wasn't watching Booktube before it. Do you know what? I don't think I was watching Booktube during the pandemic either. But watching Booktube after all of this, and watching Booktube for the first time, I saw how it really is a good tool for motivating someone. A reading slump can come about because you, you stare at your bookshelves and it's the same titles and you are not inspired. What you are inspired by is something a bit new, something you may not have heard of, something that you may have seen on the shelves of a bookshop but haven't wanted to take the plunge. There are a hundred different ways of being motivated through watching uh, booktube videos. Um, and though I don't wouldn't prescribe it as a method of getting out of slumps, because what you might end up doing is just falling down the hole of watching videos, but use it as a tool to find something new. Use it as that push, that needle to get you to take some action if you find that you have a lack of motivation. Because you have to be demotivated indeed not to be able to click on a YouTube video. Problem number nine, tag some people. I think this tag has probably done the rounds now, but I'll have a look and put some names below. Thanks to, to Readers of May Concern for creating the tag. Thanks to Pat for tagging me all that time ago. And thanks to BookBuds for giving me the motivational needle to try and record it again after the first initial failure. Thanks all and bye.